Hey there, I wasn't originally going to make this video. This is a response to Christy Winter's video that a lot of people mirrored. Uh, pretty much everyone that was involved in that compilation video mirrored, and a lot of people have made responses to it. And uh, originally I was going to uh, try to see if I could get in the compilation video that Liz Reptile is putting together. Um, and, and then I saw the Amazing Atheist video, the third one, and realize, you know, if I, if I push forth an opinion and it gets put in this compilation video, everyone else who says things, someone could try to link to me. Well, you were in the compilation video, and I'm like, well, yeah, but that doesn't mean that I agree with everyone else's responses, but some people would shove that forth. And to avoid that, I wanted to just go, okay, I'm just going to make my own response. Uh, because here's the thing, I don't even know if I should be making a response, because I I don't consider myself an anti-SJW. Um, I don't agree with the extreme things that they do, and I don't agree with many of the positions. Same with feminism. There's many positions I just don't agree with. You know, I've read about feminist theory. I've read some of these these uh, scholarly articles, and I, I don't like what I see. I, I disagree. And people can can explain it as in as verbose of a way as they want, but I still just don't agree with some of the things. It's I can say it's a way of breaking apart human behavior. It's a way. But I don't think it's a very accurate way. But because there's a certain kind train of thought that goes into how this stuff is studied, that's the train of thought that, that continues to go all the way down the line. There's never a new opening for ways of breaking apart our behavior. It just continues in this same realm. It's, it's always the same. It never changes. And if there was something that came out that proved most of this stuff wrong, they wouldn't accept it. It would not be accepted. It must follow this certain train of thought. Now, some people have worded it as if, well, that's a Marxist sort of thing. It's a social Marxist sort of thing. And then others will came in, come in and say, well, that's not technically social Marxism. And don't label it that way and blah, 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 blah. You know, lots of, don't label it that way, don't label it that way, okay. Fair enough, because I've done my share of saying, hey, don't label it that way. Um, but I don't know what words we should use to describe this mindset that so much of, of feminist theory and a lot of the stuff the, SJ, the people that we're calling SJWs say, there's always this certain political component to this ideology. You know, I may be on the left, but there are certain things I just don't support. Like, okay, I don't support the progressive stack. I don't. I, I think the progressive stack is, is just a pile of shit. I'm sorry. I think it's crap. You know, now, what to me, what should be done is, you know, whoever... Okay, it's either a totally random, randomly selected, or you know, select by content. Now, if you were saying, you know, let's start by the person whose content seems like it will be the least, um, the least informative or the least, uh, will have the least effect on people, you know, well, okay, let's put those first and the ones that we think will have the most effect last or something like that. Great, fine. But don't base it off of the demographics someone happens to fit. I think that's a terrible idea. Um, I just don't think that's the way anything should be selected. To just select people because, well, this is this is the most uh, oppressed demographic. They should speak first. Uh, no, I'm sorry. No, no. It could, because in some of these cases, the people uh, th there's a limited amount of people who can speak. So if someone is in the majority, they don't get to speak at all because of this whole progressive stack thing. I think that's a pile of crap. 
I do. I, I just don't agree with that at all. Now, does that, mean, does that make me an anti-feminist? No. It means I disagree with, with certain elements. I, 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 I disagree with whatever this mindset is, whether it's social Marxism or whatever, whatever the correct label is. Okay, this mindset that all this stuff seems to have in common, you know, I have a problem with that. Um, but, you know, trying to uh, promote uh, gender equality, yeah, I'm for that. Unfortunately, a lot of feminism does not support the idea of actual gender equality. I mean, at all. It's shoving forth that we should treat women like they're weak, but also treat them like they're strong at the same time. It's kind of oxymoronic. Um, it, it just doesn't compute. And I, I have some issues there. Um, again, it, it, this is stuff that you can find in scholarly articles. Read pages and pages and pages. Look, look at this 50-page article. Okay, fine. Let's look through the whole damn thing. And it's still crap. It's still crap. It's still a shitty message. Now, I'm not a Christian, and I don't go out of my way to uh, make fun of Christianity. I will, if you know, if I'm in a, a conversation and it, it's pointed out, you know, some of the negative things about Christianity are pointed out. I'll add to that. I'll add, you know, things that I think are negative about it. And I will talk about that if it's if if it's in context with something, you know. I don't call myself an anti-Christian. I don't call myself an anti-theist. I don't even like to call myself an atheist because of just what so many uh, online atheists tend to act like. But there are things that I would consider myself anti. I'm anti the idea that. Uh, some races are inferior to others. I'm anti-segregation. I'm anti-homophobia. I'm anti-misogyny. I'm anti the idea that different countries should be separated by races. But actual anti-feminist? No. Anti-SJW? No. Because I do believe in some sort of social justice though my views of it may differ from other people's views, so. Are you able to understand the irony of responding to the perceived political correctness of the left with perceived political correctness? It's not always just perceived as such, sometimes it is. Exasperated reactionary hypersensitivity of your own? Well, I totally agree that a lot of the people that are reacting to this stuff are way over emotional about it, and yet they'll call other people who are emotional in other ways about things well you know you're you're too emotional but they can get all bent out of shape over something uh like on a on a buzzfeed video or something and uh that's not supposed to be viewed as being over emotional it, it, there is some uh there is some hypocrisy there for sure i mean just take the way that some people respond to anita sarkeesian uh the whole they're gonna take away our games and all this fear-mongering revolving around, uh, you know, it, there's the whole Gamergate thing. And then people would try to claim that Gamergate is, oh, it's just about uh, uh, ethics in gaming journalism. No, I mean, that's a component of it. But to claim that that's what it's all about, uh, no, sorry. You know, and they get all bent out of shape. <laughs> there was a period of time, if you even mentioned the slightest negative thing about Gamergate, you'd have swarms of people saying, no, 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 that's not what Gamergate's about. That's not what Gamergate's about. And yet you could you could show them the proof. No, no, it's about ethics in gaming journalism. 
why are you getting so bent out of shape over this? Why are you blowing a gasket over this? Do you blow a gasket over this over other types of, uh, you know, uh, a lack of ethics in other types of journalism? Oh, those things aren't important. Who cares if, if, you know, what if our government is doing corrupt things? And who cares if we're bombing a country indiscriminately? Who cares about all this sort of stuff? You know, don't touch my games. Yeah, I'd say that people respond over emotionally about that sort of thing. Nobody's coming to take away your games. So, yeah, I get it. How do you define right wing? Anti-SJWs often have an aversion to being labeled as right-wing, yet they regularly defend the right and bash the left. Therefore, why is being labeled right-wing a bad thing to you? To me, the right-wing exudes an attitude of, well, you know, just pick yourself up by your bootstraps. And, uh, you know, self-determination, which is not a bad trait, but they turn it into a political position. They turn that attitude into a political position. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with the idea of, hey, you know, you, 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 you might have messed up, but pick yourself up and, and dust yourself off and try again, right? That's a good thing. But when it's politicized, it's bad. That's my viewpoint of it. Um, you know, it, it's... It, there are variants of what is right-wing. There are people that believe uh, some of that philosophy more than others. Um, I find probably the worst type of right-wing uh, uh, viewpoints are anarcho-capitalist libertarians. I just, I find it disgusting. Um, you know, let's privatize everything. Uh, and it pretty much the, the rich rule the roost, sort of like how a lot of people generally on the right seem to, for some reason, think that things work as. Um, you know, a, an idea of trickle-down economics. I, I know someone who is on the right who actually claims that there's no such thing as someone sitting on their money holding on to their money. No, no, it, it, it always, when, when, you know, the richer people are, the, the more that they'll, well, it, they'll automatically, you know, add to the economy just out of being rich. Oh, they'll put it in a bank, and the bank can do all these things with that money. And it's just like, wow, you know. No such thing as hoarding money. Uh, and, you know, let's, and one of the things that's very in common with what the right has become, because the right hasn't always been this way. And there are people who are on the right that don't necessarily fit this, but there is a commonality of on, on the right of this idea that, well, let's, let's get rid of welfare. Um, let's get rid of or privatize Social Security. Um, let's get rid of any of the safety nets and make it so a charity work and churches should should help uh, take care of the poor and disadvantaged you know again more of that idea of well just pick yourself up by your bootstraps no matter what you've done no matter what situation you're in just pick yourself up by your bootstraps which isn't always possible you know that's my viewpoint of what the right wing is and there are different sides to it that will that get rather, you know, some sides to it get rather racist, some sides to it get rather sexist, some sides to it get rather homophobic, and most of it tends to be very traditionalist. And, I, you know, if a tradition sucks and hurts people, it should be dropped. If it's something that is, is reasonable and helps people, then, you know, keep it. But we have to be able to uh, drop old traditions that hurt people, and we have to be able to start new traditions that are helpful to people. But that's my viewpoint on that, and that's why I'm not a right-winger. So, And if it's because right-wing is used as a pejorative, can you not see how labeling people as SJWs or regressives is also pejorative? Agreed. Rather than telling people you disagree with to drink bleach, wouldn't it be more productive for you to have an actual conversation about the issues you feel matter? 
or is it just easier to do the bleach thing? That was more of a statement than a question. You're saying that you think it's stupid when people tell others to drink bleach or kill themselves, and I'll tend to agree, but it, you weren't really asking a question. It was kind of rhetorical. You claim to be proponents of rational, logical, evidence-based argumentation. That's great. That's entirely laudable. But when I look at your online activity, when I look at, I don't know, for example, your Twitter feed, that's often not what I see. How do you reconcile this claim to be evidence-based and rational and logical against stuff like, oh, I was just trolling you, oh, I was just shitposting, or TLDR? I tend to agree with your statement or rhetorical question, but then again, we're also talking about Twitter here. And Twitter, with the 140-character limit, isn't exactly the place where you have reasonable conversations. You know, once you have several people that you're tagging in it, you know, maybe you can put uh, three words and, you know, have some sort of a, a discussion in, in three-word sections. You know, it, Twitter is stupid for that. It's stupid. Twitter is not a place to have reasonable discussion. Twitter is a place for little one-liners and memes. And in that regard, I can't even count how many times I've seen some really, really stupid feminist memes. I've seen some stupid uh, memes that are supposed to be supporting social justice that... I mean, the memes are so stupid that it's actually anti-social justice. So, you know. Are you aware that the ridiculous buzzwords you helped to popularize, like SJW and cuck and regressive, have all lost whatever meaning they once had, and only serve now as catch-all insults and pejoratives to derail any meaningful conversation? I tend to agree with you there. It is primarily used as a pejorative or a way of trying to stop the conversation. The same way that words like racist and sexist and misogynist and privilege and patriarchy are used the same way. What is it with you people and committing actual literal felonies? Like, you might want to work on that? Well, since you are basically labeling uh, anti-SJWs as uh, criminals, then, you know, maybe I should say that feminists should stop pulling fire alarms, they should stop vandalizing art that people put on their own houses, you know, uh, feminists should, uh, and SJWs should stop interrupting, uh, you know, Bernie uh, Sanders speeches, and, uh, you know, they should stop uh, going up in people's faces uh, saying that, uh, no, you can't hold this sign that says something I disagree with. Um, you know, they can't uh, push someone off a campus who is supposed to be, uh, who's there to report on something. It's in a public place, but, you know, you know, maybe feminists shouldn't do a lot of things like that. Okay, now, this isn't normally the way that I'd word it, but I'm replying to you particularly, um, who have basically claimed that those that are against the whole SJW thing um, are criminals. So, you know, it's normally not the way I'd word things, but since you went there, I went there. How's that? I mean, I thought the Ralph retort was so rational when he was fantasizing about beating up women with dyed hair, but then he assaulted a police officer, and finally I was convinced. In videos and in the comment sections, anti-feminists often take up the most extreme or the weakest feminist position they can find, or they just straight up misrepresent what the feminist position is. Strong positions don't need to be tackled if they are valid positions. Uh, most of the people, even if they call themselves anti-feminist, uh, most of the people, if they really gave it some thought, would not actually be against some of the stronger positions. And some of the stronger positions are some of the things that you would find in the dictionary definition of feminism. And most people aren't going to disagree with the dictionary definition of feminism. Instead, why not take up the strongest, most robust feminist argument you can find and really challenge yourself? Because again, the strong positions are normally the valid positions. 
I am deeply concerned with male addiction rates, suicide rates, and abuse rates because I have worked with these issues in the quote-unquote real world. Would you be willing as anti-feminists to put aside your differences with feminists for the greater good of addressing these issues, especially as the kind of solutions needed are not necessarily gendered? And if so, I would actually like you to let me know, because I'm not fucking around or presenting any gotchas here. I actually really think that we could get something done if we work together. So, yeah. This seems like more of a request for a collaboration than a question. What is third wave feminism? Because I've often heard you folks insist that you have no objection to feminism in general. It's specifically third wave feminism that you have a quarrel with. So what is third wave feminism specifically? And what specifically about third wave feminism do you have such a problem with? Well, I've learned not to call it third wave feminism. I've learned to say, I'll say the extreme end of feminism is how I'll usually word it. Um, to describe third wave feminism in some short couple sentences, I don't really know how to. I'll fully admit, I don't really know how to. Now, the things that I don't like about what I'm, what I consider the extreme end of feminism, um, but this is somewhat a mainstream part of feminism as well, is the whole patriarchy theory. I mean, I understand that we have leftovers of a patriarchal society, but even that could be, even that could be kind of argued a little bit, because a lot of the ways that we used to live are based off of survival. There's a trade that was made, you know, between the sexes. This isn't to say that it, that, you know, it wasn't worse on women, especially when it comes to a feeling like they're enslaved by men, a feeling like they don't have any right to their own choices or their own bodies. But there was still a trade because the man was the one to go out and uh, do what's necessary to have food on the table and to have a roof over their head. So there were responsibilities. And these things are hard on both the men and the women. So to make it sound like the, it, it only benefits men or is, is only bad to women is just false. And the version of patriarchy that we have now is so patriarchy light that the part that's upsetting about the way that it gets talked about, it's as if, well, you know, you're, uh, I mean, they might as well be saying something like, oh, well, you're, uh, you're just part of the Illuminati. You know, that's how it feels when people say it. Whether that's what they mean or not, it doesn't really matter. How people interpret it is what matters. You know, if if most people interpret it as if it's suggesting that there's some, there's just some force. It's a force, and men are the reason for this force. This force that keeps a woman down. Keeps a woman under the guy's thumb, right? That's how it's normally interpreted. And, and if that's not how it is, but people keep interpreting it that way, maybe it's time for you to re-explain things. See, when I, when I go to read some of these uh, feminist articles, some of these uh, scholarly articles, they take a very, very long time to still say that basic element of, you know, somehow men are... It's, it's almost as if we're, we're conscious that we're doing some larger thing. Like I said, it's like accusing someone of being part of the Illuminati. Oh, you're a shill for Google. Oh, you're a sellout. That one's always a funny one too, you know. Someone can be, just because they, they, they held, hold a position that's kind of mainstream. Oh, you're a sellout. <laughs> there are people who think that no matter what it is, as long as it isn't mainstream, then it's intellectual. <laughs> I just... Uh, so, you know, I, I get what feminists are fighting against, but you also have to think about 
What wording are you using for things? How do people interpret that wording? If no matter how many times you explain that this means this, and every time they respond, they show they still don't get that, that you're saying that this means this, it's time to word things different. It's time to not use some of these words that trigger the anti-SJWs. And they've got their trigger words, and they throw a tantrum over it. Now still, if you say the, the phrase toxic masculinity, they'll take it as if you're saying that masculinity is toxic. But just masculinity, all masculinity is toxic. And no matter how you word it, well, see, that still means that you're saying masculinity is toxic. And it's, no, no, no. And th there's just no getting through. You know, there, th if you say that there are certain traits that can be accentuated within a masculine system, I guess you could call it, you could say that there are certain traits that if you put, put way, way up on a pedestal, suck for people, you know, that it's possible to use masculinity to be an asshole. Yeah, but you're still using the word toxic masculinity and that means this and this and this and this. Fine. So you have to find a different way to word the stuff. That's just how it goes. There's really no getting around it. Well, they should get educated. Well, that's not going to happen. Especially since, in order to get educated in that way, there's this mindset that I described at the beginning of this video that, you know, people will argue, well, no, that's that's not really uh, social Marxism. Well, yeah, it is. Well, well, no, it isn't. Well, yeah, it is. Well, no, it isn't. Well, yeah, it is. And there's no... So I don't even know the right words to use for this. And this is one of the problems with what's happening to language. We can't seem to settle on things. And a lot of people are saying, well, you should settle on the words that they're teaching at colleges. And a lot of these words have been chosen to be controversial. A lot of these phrases that feminists use were originally chosen to be controversial. And unfortunately, that element of it is, is biting feminists in the ass. That's why you've got to stop using certain words. Stop using these words that trigger anti-SJWs. And then some of you are like, oh, I can trigger them. Oh, that's great. And then people go around, you know, purposely trying to trigger them and then acting like uh, they want a reasonable conversation. I mean, you can see it in some of the hangouts. And they'll just be giddy about it. Oh, we're so giddy. Because now we can find some way to manipulate the people that we're talking to. Let's just piss them off, you know? And there's a certain kind of bullying to that. I mean, I'll just say, that's bullying. That is bullying. You are trying to piss people off. You are trying to make people feel bad. And that's bullshit. And when I say you, I'm saying the people that do this sort of thing, the people that, that exude that kind of behavior. Many of you already know that some of these words trigger people, and you just continue to use them over and over again. And so it kind of makes me wonder, well, why wouldn't they fight back by saying, well, you're just an SJW? Oh, well, you're just a third wave feminist. You got to meet people at least halfway. And if they don't seem to be that willing, then, you know, if you really want to teach them something, then you go almost all the way to where they are and word things like the way they would understand. And then you'll probably get somewhere. But if you refuse to do that, and you must word it this certain way, well, because that's the proper way to word it. It's proper. It's very proper. I need to be proper. I need to be proper at all times. No, fuck your this proper shit. Find another way to word it. If you really want to convey this stuff and it's not being understood using this, this, this same wording and these same catchphrases that people generally assume you're using as a pejorative because some people use it as a pejorative, if you're, just, if you're going to just continue to do that, you're not really wanting to communicate. You're there to manipulate. And you, well, well, I disagree. Well, you know, you can see how people react. And you, I mean, you want people to react to you 
in ways where they think of, you want them to think about your feelings. You want other people to think about what could, you know, hey, don't do that. This could be, that could, be, that could hurt someone. You know, even mentally, you could hurt someone mentally. You don't want people to do that to you, but you, you're totally, totally cool with doing it to others. I'm sorry, it's fucked up no matter who does it. So what is it that uh, pisses me off about, about certain sides of feminism? It's all this shit I'm saying in this comment after Steve Shives. But I'm going to add some more to that. Okay, I don't like the way that it talks about objectification. It doesn't talk about how people are objectified in the workplace, that you're paid to be an object because you're paid to be a tool. And when you're an object, you're still a human being, but you're also an object. That's what a job is most of the time. You are being paid to be a tool. There are a number of incidents where we become objects. And yet, feminism shoves this forth like it's just some terrible thing and that it's, it's, it's something that, that men are the ones that perpetuate. It never finds the, uh, uh, the way that women objectify men in, in any sort of negative way. It's there in the curriculum, but nobody brings it out. You know, it's, it's almost mentioned more as a side note and not something that should be discussed as far as the way that women objectify men. You know, it's all this, oh, it's so terrible. People are looked at as sex objects. Well, guys are looked at as uh, money-making machines, you know, in, in, in just about as equally. That side doesn't get talked about. You know, everything's just, let's demonize men's sexuality. Let's demonize the element of, of looking at someone in a sexual way. It's, it's like a puritanical kind of belief. It, it's, it could actually stop people more from thinking in sexual manners than religion, than what you would call a, someone would call a standard religion. And it's due to these ideas about, about objectification. And these ideas about objectification, I mean, it is pretty much a series of rules. It is, it is a dogma that people are supposed to follow. What I particularly don't like about that element of it is it's putting more and more limitations on how people communicate in their daily lives. And yet, and yet, as I said earlier, many of you aren't, aren't willing to change the way that you word things in order to get people to understand you, but everyone else is supposed to change everything about the way that they think of others, the way that they word things, the way that they, they carry themselves. Everyone's supposed to change all those things. You know, there are, there are feminists out there, and I don't know what side of feminism this would be called. I don't know if it, would, it could be said to be third wave feminism or what. But there are people shoving forth, oh, this is, this is terrible. Look at these characters in these video games. Look at these characters in these movies. There are a lot more important things to focus on than fucking video games and movies. There's a lot more important things to focus on than whether a guy likes to sit with his legs open because he has balls. You know, testicles which hurt when you squish them. The feminists that push that sort of thing forth, what do you call them? I, I, I call them extreme. I also sometimes call them crazy when they push that sort of thing forth. There are some people who are, they're like seeing misogyny and uh, the patriarchy in every little thing. There are people that shove forth, um, well, look, it's, it's a skyscraper. It's a phallic symbol. It's the patriarchy. I mean, what, what are you, how are you supposed to respond to that shit? So when, when, when people say the patriarchy, they think of all this crazy shit. So, you know, why not, if, if you're expecting other people to, to not use certain words because it hurts you, either emotionally or mentally or just in some way, then you should be willing to do the same for others. Why am I continually asked to answer for the views of feminists if I agree with feminism's overall aims, but don't agree much with those particular feminists? Does that mean that I can ask you to answer for anybody who labels themselves similarly to you, even if you don't agree much? Good point you're making there. 
If SUs are bad because they spend too much time whining and don't talk about real problems, then why aren't you talking about those problems instead of just whining about the other people over and over and over for literally years? I mean, in the scale of priorities, that's like even lower, right? You know, you've got the real problems, you've got the things that feminists worry about, and then you've got you going, ah, oh, how, how dare they? Just... How dare they have different priorities from me? Why can't they do what I do? Whine about whining. Forever. For a living. That's healthy. Fantastic criticism of what a lot of anti-SJWs do. Fantastic criticism of that. Very well done. Very well said. Why don't you seem as concerned with actual feminist theory in academia as you are with wrecking people for views? You are the most condescending little shit on this entire video. You piss me off. Your attitude sucks. You are just a step away from Big Red. But I'll answer your question anyway. Okay, a lot of people see what the academia shoves forth and they want no part of it. People can see how indoctrinated in an ideology that a lot of people who study this are. And this ideology is you know, people will argue back and forth, well, that's not really social Marxism, well, that's social Marxism, well, that isn't, well, no, it isn't, yes, it is, no, it, you know, whatever it happens to be, whatever the label really is for whatever this political ideology, um, that is, that exudes from this academia. And people aren't interested in becoming indoctrinated with that. I mean, if someone told you to read a bunch of uh, um, Nazi literature, well, no, no, it's really not that bad. Really, it's not that bad. Just, just read, just read some more of it. No, just don't, don't complain. Don't, don't say anything bad about the Nazis until you've read their literature. Oh, don't say anything bad about Christianity until you've read the, the read the Bible from front to back, and can list page numbers. When, when, when talking about something, I, I, I mean, come on, you know, an example I've brought up before. There are two people, there, there's a product that came out 10 years ago, some sort of tech, uh, technological product. Two people have studied it for months, the, this, the, the user's manual. They know it from front to back. Then there's someone else who has been working with that technology for 10 years. Who's going to know more? You know, the one who's actually worked with it for 10 years or the people that know the, the, uh, the, the user's manual from top to bottom and can give you page numbers and, and, and word things exactly the way that it says it in the manual. You know, a lot of people pay attention to a lot of stuff that goes on socially. You don't need to have some formal education to understand human behavior. You know, it's so many of you are so crazy on the, you got to go crazy on these words. It's, it's worded this way for shock value. That's why these words, and they, they were supposed to be controversial. They've been worded this way to, to kind of cause attention. And unfortunately, the attention that, that, that the way these things have been worded causes negative attention. And we're just kind of you know, well, it's it's an ideology. It wants negative attention. Um, yeah, that's that's the first thing we're going to want to study. No, no. To your second part of what you said about uh, going around poning people, okay, I agree with you on that. You know, I disagree with you on the first part of what you said, and I agree with you on the second part of what you said. Okay, I think it's this this whole ponage thing, this ponage culture is stupid. And I'd have to say it, it's probably it, 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 a lot of this started with that whole 4chan kind of mindset. And there are people that go around thinking that uh, oh 4chan is highly intellectual because if you're if you're against something that's mainstream even if it's even if it's science, uh, you know, uh, it, it must be intellectual. And you can be a bully and call people names and and consider yourself intellectual somehow. Then that's what a lot of I'm sorry, a lot of the people in the alt right seem to be shoving forth. 
sometimes in the alt-right, sometimes people who don't call themselves alt-right but call themselves anti-SJWs. You know, it's, it's a bunch of crap. There's crap on both sides. And, uh, you know, the crap is always greener on the other side. <laughs> Why is trying and failing to debunk a study into sexual assault the number one priority for a rational thinker now? Doesn't it, does it maybe, maybe say something about your priorities? Does it maybe? Does it, nah, it's fine, it's fine, it's the feminazis, we have to stop them. They're taking away our video games. Yes, I laughed, I did, I laughed. Look, Anita, I'm sorry, but we, we, I, I can't, we, we can't actually destroy video games, that doesn't make any sense. One of the major arguments that I see in many of your videos is that it is possible to separate criticism of the religion of Islam from the actual Muslim people. And yet, this line seems to be crossed very often. I see things like raghead or camel fucker or other things like that in your comment sections. I see people taking very serious shots at Muslims in videos and hangouts, and they don't get called out. At least not that I can see. Well, there's a bully system going on. It's it's like uh, how police will uh, defend their own, no matter how wrong they are about something. Um, people are scared to say anything about it because then they'll get swarmed by a bunch of other YouTubers telling them that they're uh, cucks and they're regressive and they're pathetic and they should go kill themselves and so on and so forth. So nobody says anything. And then people are worried about getting doc dropped by people like, you know, atheism is unstoppable. So my question is this, why should a person of conscience who is concerned about the Muslim people and their community not being harmed or mistreated, why should they believe that you're actually only attempting to look at the ideas and talk about the ideas if you ignore bigotry that's occurring right in front of you? And in that light, would you be willing to break bread and salt with moderate Muslim people on your videos, have hangouts, invite them to your channels? Just just in order to build some bridges there and to learn more about what they think and how they feel and what their experience has been so that information and knowledge can be furthered. They won't because they don't care. They don't. They don't care. They don't care how individual Muslims are. They're going to judge a large swath of Muslims based on the belief system they have, a belief system that people who do crazy fucked up things do. And it's true that right now, the religion that is most often what people have who are carrying out terrorism is Islam. But people aren't wanting to know that. Well, I say there are some things we don't want to know. Important things! Yes. Enough talk! It's smashing time! Do you deny that systemic racism against black people is like a thing in general? If so, what? Okay, just, just step up. Just cover your ears for a second and let the smart people talk. If not, why is it so much more important to you to demonize groups like Black Lives Matter than to actually use your platforms to discuss actual solutions to issues surrounding race and racism? Because too many of them want to just blame all of the problems on black people. You know, people like Atheism is Unstoppable, uh, Live Life uh, 8072, uh, um, autopsy 87, you know, they can just repeat over and over again, uh, you know, things like, uh, well, she didn't comply. She didn't comply. When some woman, you know, didn't do everything exactly the way the police officer asked, but they didn't do anything that w could have been harmful either, you know, or some guy that's, that's backing up and he, and he's, he has his hands up and he get, and he gets, well, they didn't comply just the right way. You know, as if you're, as if they're suggesting that a police should, uh, like, we should be living in some police state, like, like some, I don't even know, some sort of lockdown or something. You know, like going out on on a road trip. Uh, uh, you know, maybe there should be uh, uh, checkpoints and roadblocks and things like that. You know, 
I don't know. I, I, I don't know what they're expecting, but they seem to want to just have some excuse to be able to say, well, black people commit more crimes. Black people commit more crimes. Black people commit more crimes. And they don't want to talk about any answers to that because they think that just stating something, uh, stating a statistic over and over again is going to help something. Well, you know, we're not going to solve anything unless unless everyone admits black people commit more crimes. Black people commit more crimes. You know, and that's that just seems to be all they want to do. I mean, there is some truth that we do have to look at. We do have to look at statistics and see what it means. But these people aren't offering any solutions at all. No solutions whatsoever. There are some that when you push them enough, they start to talk about some some possible solutions. But the ones that are making all these ponage videos, no, they won't talk about it. They won't talk about it at all. They won't even admit that that some of the uh, the policies in schools and the things that police are told to do are unreasonable. They won't even admit that. You know, it would have to. There would have to be an epidemic of white people specifically being targeted. And then they'd say something, oh, that's terrible, white people. So yeah. If you've ever discussed or done a video about black on black crime, when are you going to do a video about white on white crime and what we as white people can do to solve the problems in our community? Are we having a specific problem in that area that I wasn't aware of? Why is a literal teenager's different definition of racism from you so horrifying that you all have to go, NO! NO! WE HAVE TO STOP HIM! WE'VE GOT TO DEBUNK HIM NOW! Ah! That isn't just Milo Stewart's definition. It is the definition that feminists tend to be using based off of the academia that they are studying. It's the definition that people like Dreadnought Silvas tends to use and calls anyone who doesn't use this new definition of racism uh, uh, uneducated and stupid. So, you know, uh, this isn't something that's specifically to Milo Stewart. It's something that only the people that are studying the, this stuff formally that use this definition. It's not the dictionary definition. It's not the colloquial definition. And it's certainly not the historical definition. But I'm told that, well, it's, it's being used to, to show the things that make racism so much worse. Well, then add a word to it. You know, institutionalized racism. Say, uh, you know, systemic racism. But don't just change the word racism. But a lot of you are wanting to change the word racism. And it's lame. Because it's saying that only white people in, in a country such as the United States, that only white people can be racist. And that's a, a crock of shit. It's a steaming pile of feces with lots of chunks. Wherever did you get the idea that racism was a self-applied identity? And if the only true racists are the racists who self-identify as racists, how can we ever expect to make any social progress to reduce racism? Or did I just answer my own question? Man, I hate admitting that you're right about something, Steve, but you're right about this. You often say that you are for equality of opportunity, but if people of color, for instance, have to overcome barriers whites do not, because some people don't even want to admit that some demographics have a much harder time, have a lot more barriers in the way, have a lot more obstacles to overcome. They just, they don't want to look at it. Well, you know, it all has to be coming from how, what I would do if I was them. Well, no, how about thinking about what they would do because they are them. And if you can't even put on their shoes enough to look at it, just a little bit of it, you know, you're, you're doing the, uh, the Kevin Costner of, uh, of empathy. You know, Kevin Costner is, is the same in everything. Every, all of his movies, he's always the same. You know? He can't really seem to play a part without, oh, well, Kevin Costner as this character. Kevin Costner as that character. Right? And this is doing that when it comes to being able to empathize with others. Well, you can only empathize with 
yourself. And people don't want to expand that. I, I sometimes wonder whether people are scared. You know, what if it makes them feel shy? What if it, it would, you know, it, it's the difference between being shy and being uh, more uh, outgoing and assertive and things like that, you know? Because there's kind of this balancing act with that stuff. And I think some people are afraid that they will go into this mode of of shyness. I think some people look at that somehow as a weakness. Almost as if we're always continually, perpetually in some sort of battle. This is what I mean by like a warlike mindset that we seem to have in this culture. And I, I tried to explain it before, and I said, warrior culture. And then people called me out on that, saying, well, no, it's not really that. Well, okay, how do I word this? How do I, you know, how do I word it? And it's trying to figure that out. It's like people constantly want to be at war, whether on a personal level, on a, you know, a larger level than that, a larger level than that, until you get to the point where it's the government going to war with all these different places. This country, the United States, is what I'm talking about here, um, has that kind of mentality. Uh, like we're, we're try still trying to live some sort of television version of what the Old West was in some town. Like we're still trying to carry on some of those traditions or something. I enjoy watching... I like when I see someone British in some stand-up routine imitating what they perceive a generic American person, a generic person from the United States. I, I get a kick out of it. Because I'm like, oh, that's, that's so true. That's so true. There's things about mannerisms. There's, things, there's just attitudes. There's, and I laugh because I know it's true. Now, uh, I think the other way around, you know, kind of describes, oh, with the queen, <laughs> or, you know, oh my, or there's this, there's a certain, or I'm, I'm much too good for you. I'm too good to talk to you. Goodbye. I don't think they appreciate that quite as much. Um, but then again, I think most people in here, here in the United States are, they get so offended when people make fun of their of of anything about the culture here most people wouldn't take the the people from britain showing what their their generalized imitation of a generic a person from the united states of in our culture this culture we've got in this country um i don't think most people would take that very well here that's not what we're like that's not no no that's wrong no and they, they're not even trying to look at the things that are true about it. It's a strange thing, the culture here. There's so much of this, there's there's this posturing. Like, I'm some sort of badass. Like, like when you're out in public, you're, you're supposed to just sort of, you're supposed to look mean. If you're a guy, you're supposed to look mean. You're supposed to look like someone who you don't mess with. And then people leave you alone. If you show too much of your feminine side, people look at you like they want you dead. And there are people out there, I mean, this is still to this day. When I do something that looks a little too feminine, I'm out in public, I see people looking at me like, what the fuck, dude? You're not even a dude, you're, and, you know, there's, there's stuff still out there. And I've learned to tr to ignore it for the most part and just try to carry myself strong. And I'm already a pretty masculine guy. As far as appearance, as far as, you know, my actual mannerisms, most of the time are pretty masculine. But I wouldn't feel... I wouldn't have that feeling of a need to be so masculine if it wasn't for the way our culture is. It still is. If you're feminine, you're, you're supposed to be a joke. A sad joke. Like someone not to be taken seriously at all. Like they're just 
comic relief, good at decorating, and really, really good at their job that they can be obsessive about. And then, of course, you have that the uh, the other uh, stereotype still in the background where it's, uh, well, oh, you're someone who spreads AIDS. You know, where do you fit in society? And I'm not saying you have to. To fit doesn't mean that you have to be what other people are. It's just knowing where are you actually placed in society? I mean, there's a certain amount of things about society that's like a puzzle piece that, a puzzle that will never be completely put together. But, you know, you eventually find this spot that you fit right in. Being part of something doesn't mean that you lose your individuality. It's kind of like why I like the concept of Ubuntu, and I don't mean the operating system. You know, I am because we are. I think that is a beautiful concept. Beautiful. But it's not something that most people here can accept. There are certain things that I will always be somewhat numb to. Because of being gay. There is has, is always going to be something that I'm numb to. Something I'm never going to notice. Certain types of relations I'll never be able to have with other people. Because these walls are up. And that's why it saddens me when I see so many people with these walls up. We should be working towards living in a society where people don't have to have these goddamn walls up because they stop us from being the creative, beautiful people that we are. And I understand that idealism is looked down upon anymore. Nobody seems to want to uh, be an idealist anymore. Anyone who's an idealist in some way is considered an SJW. And after I started just getting called that, just primarily, getting called an SJW, I'm just like, well, fuck it. I don't care what that what what people think of me in that regard. You know, I was trying to do things to avoid being called that. I was trying to, to make sure I was in a mindset to avoid being called that. And I don't really care anymore. Now that I know how rabid the other side is, or even the slightest thing that shows any sort of idealism, that shoves forth anything for us to you know, try to actually improve situations and trying to make the world a better place, is just is met with, well, you're a... a you're a regressive, liberal, pussy, SJW, blah, 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 fucking blah, cuck, blah, blah, blah. You know, but before I, I, I thought the whole thing was, you know, to, if I could avoid being called those names, then I must be, I must be more on the path of, of what, you know, uh, the, the right thing. And then after just realizing just how bad that was, it's why, you know, some of the past couple of years, I'm, I'm really disappointed in myself. I'm extremely disappointed in myself. Because I let myself go down those roads. I let the fear of bullying overtake me. I don't, it's, it's like more of this, this, well, be a man. Yes, be a man. Don't think about your feelings. Don't think about other people's feelings. Don't think about the plights of other people. Be a man. Be a man. That sort of mindset is toxic. Such as discrimination and unequal treatment as are well documented in various studies, then how can the current situation be thought of as equal opportunity in any real way? And why do you consider it racist to discuss these issues? Because they actually don't believe there are inequalities. 
do you understand basic English syntax? Like, you know, if I say this cat is pretty, I don't mean that all other cats aren't pretty. Like, do you really not get why saying all lives matter in response to Black Lives Matter is not only racially insensitive, but just patently ridiculous? Honestly, I think some of it is because they feel it's the oppression Olympics and they want in on those oppression Olympics, damn it. I mean, they can't tell you things that they experience specifically as white people, systemic issues that make it so difficult for them, uh, systemic issues that they've been dealing with for generations, you know. But so, so to them, you know, that means that the other way around is true as well, or something like that. But they want in on the, that oppression Olympics, damn it. Isn't it offensive to men to assume that a man could only ever want equality for women and therefore be comfortable with feminism as a whole in order to get laid, and that reduces us to beasts. If that was the case, wouldn't I attempt to get laid from my views instead of not ever trying that? If you say you're an egalitarian, will you call out the man-hating slurs that you see coming from people within your community? People who use terms like cuck, beta male, faggot, or mangina? All of these things basically distill men down into thinking that the most important thing about them is to be having sex with a woman. That's rather offensive. So what are you doing to stop this kind of behavior in your community? Nothing, because they don't want to give up being some sort of badass. What has the number of followers, the number of likes, the number of dislikes, the number of retweets, the number of subscribers any of those numbers, any of those metrics, what have they got to do with the argument? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Deepak Chopra, for example, a man who trots out an endless stream of pseudoscientific quantum woo bollocks, has nearly three million followers. So what? Those people follow him because he tells them what they want to hear. Why even mention the number of followers you have? What difference does it make? Because of the appeal to popularity fallacy. Why is it that you go on and fucking on about safe spaces and trigger warnings and delicate little flowers, but continue to hide behind your cartoon avatars and your childish pseudonyms? And whenever anyone calls you out on your sexist, racist, homophobic, bigoted rhetoric, you become the argument of your own scorn and are hashtag triggered, as they say. Because in their attempts to somehow prove to themselves and others that words don't hurt them, they throw a tantrum. Because, you know, you don't really feel, if, if you're just angry, then that means you're not really showing your feelings, or something like that, right? You know, because feelings are for pussies. Are you willing to publicly acknowledge and admonish the massive amount of hatred, bullying, harassment, and intimidation that a lot of your fans infringe upon people. And I don't mean these tiny disclaimers that you put under the description fold or flash for two seconds at the beginning of the video that you know nobody reads. I mean a public and ongoing anti-bullying stance. That's not gonna happen because bullying is their livelihood. Or do you kind of like watching your fans go around harassing people and calling them slurs and telling them to kill themselves? You kind of like it, don't you? I mean, if that's your thing, I guess that's just what you're into just makes you a dick. Why do you find it so hard to believe that feminists are being harassed online? Because they want to preach this mindset that words don't hurt people, and because it's online, they say that there's no such thing as bullying online because, well, it's just words, and it's not any physical action, so therefore it's not bullying, or something like that. But then they show themselves as being hurt really easily and having really thin skins, even though they brag about having a thick skin. Because, you know, um, emotions are for pussies or something like that, like I said earlier. If you identify as an egalitarian, then I'm interested in your take on the usefulness of the concept of the original position as laid out by John Rawls in his theory of justice. You are not my instructor. You are not my professor, okay? This is not a term paper. Get over it. As a supporter, as a proponent of freedom of speech, why do you want to quash academic freedom? 
you're not familiar with the concept of academic freedom, it's worth, in the UK at least, looking up the 1988 Education Reform Act and seeing what that says about the rights of academics to put across unpopular opinions. Those opinions are not unpopular at colleges. Those opinions are very, 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 very popular at colleges. So what in the world are you talking about? Why are you so obsessed with Anita Sarkeesian? I, I think they secretly want her to get really popular because they're the reason why she's popular. Look, Anita, I'm sorry. I, I thought I could debunk these incredibly well-reasoned arguments, but it turns out that when there isn't any reasoning because they only read the first paragraph of the study, there isn't anything to debunk. Yeah, I know it's a huge shame, but I guess I've technically failed. I know, but you're going to have to cut these bits out of the video. Yeah, that's a shame. Oh well, uh, good luck with it anyway. I love you too. I laughed. <laughs>